Hi, good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. The show is broadcast live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show every week as we are doing today, and it is posted into our archives. Both the live show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch. So um, please do share with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, anyone you think might be interested in any of the topics we have on the show. Uh, for those of you not from Nebraska, the Nebraska Library Commission is the state agency for libraries um, in other states that may be your state library. And we provide services to all types of libraries in the state. So uh, you will find things on our show for publics, academics, K-12, uh, corrections, museums, archives, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> excuse me, anything and everything. Uh, so um, you should definitely be able to find something for everybody in both our upcoming shows and our archives. And since I'm uh, talking about the archives right now, I will show you right now. Um, here is our, um, this is our Encompass Live website where you, I'm sure, came to to uh, join the show. Uh, our archives are here linked right below our upcoming shows. And you can search for our archive, through our full archives if you want to. Today's show will be posted on the top here, most recent ones first. Um, it'll be there by the end of the day tomorrow because we are closed on Friday. Um, I usually give myself to the end of the week, but I'm going to get it up there by the end of the day tomorrow. Um, we're closed on Friday for the New Year's Day holiday. And um, everyone who attended this morning or registered for today's show will get an email from me letting you know when the recording is ready. Um, while we're here, I'll also show you, you can search our show archives. Um, our full archives are just the most recent 12 months if you want to. This is because this is the full archives of Encompass Live from when we first premiered. And I'll scroll down here to show you. Uh, the first episode of Encompass Live was in January 2009. So there's over 10 years worth of recordings here. I'm not going to scroll all the way through the whole thing because that would be crazy. <laughs> but just so you know, it does go back all the way to 2009. So um, if you do search your archives for a topic, just pay attention to the original broadcast date. It's on here for everyone so you'll know when that show actually took place. Some information may become old and outdated. Some websites may, some links might not work anymore. Uh, some services may no longer exist at all anymore. Um, you never know. Certain things stand the test of time, but some things don't. So just pay attention if you are uh, going through our archives. Uh, here on Encompass Live, we do have um, speakers from Nebraska Library Commission that come in and do presentations, and we have speakers from across the country uh, that will come in and do presentations for us. Uh, this morning, we have with us is actually a uh, Library Commission uh, employee. Uh, Amanda Sweet is our Technology Innovation Librarian, and she joins us every the last Wednesday of every month for her pretty sweet tech. Uh, sessions. Good morning, Amanda. Good morning. And uh, if you are a techie person at your library, this is definitely the show for you. Pay, you know, you know, sign up for her last Wednesday of the month shows. You always have something that is definitely more tech geared. Um, we have other things during the month that can be techie too, but I guarantee she'll be talking about something like that. And today she's going to be talking to us about video production. And I am going to hand over presenter control to you now, Amanda, so you can get your screen up and share your guide with everyone. There we go. Looks good. And right. I will um, just hand it over to you to tell us all about how to do the best videos we can. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. Okay, let me... So, and also, before we get started, the link for this video production guide, we'll be sharing it into the chat and it'll be available to you afterwards in the arc and the recording as well. So, and I did put the link to this video production guide into the chat already, so you can click it open at any time you like. Yep, if you want to follow along. Yep. All right. So, on here, you can see the general steps that I've laid out for making your own videos. So I've been making videos for libraries for about maybe about six years now. And you'd be amazed at how many different types of videos are available to be made. So the first thing that you'll always want to do is plan, 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 plan. Because when I first started this out, I used to just say, why do I need a plan? Why do I need a storyboard? Why do I need to script this out? So I just started shooting video and started trying to put it all together. And 
it was a mess. So I started over the years, I started putting together a video planning guide, which I'll click open here. So these are the major decisions that you'll make when you are deciding to put together a video. So I put this together so that you can either print it for yourself or you can type into it and print it out so it's actually legible if you don't trust your own handwriting. So you'll start off by narrowing down the focus to a topic. And I put in the recommended length for a video before people's attention kind of starts to wane a little bit. And that, that tends to be between one and 10 minutes according to several research studies. I tend to go down to about five to six minutes myself for most tutorials. And then I chunk it down into smaller segments. And it really helps to know who's going to be watching your video. And you may not always have a solid understanding of what your target audience is going to be because when you post a video online, anyone can watch it, but you do want to design a video for a specific audience. So, and this will also help you land down your color scheme and any different bits of extras that you need to put in for accessibility. And yes, they do make videos for blind people. It happens. I used to work with, for at Beyond Vision where we made training materials for blind visually impaired and videos were a big part of it. And they were mostly all posted on YouTube. So it's something to keep in mind. And you'll also wanna know why in the world is your audience going to care about what you're saying? It sounds a little flippant and almost rude to say that, but it's true. People have a lot of competition for their attention out there. And even just thinking about this and starting it out, just starting out right away with why should people care can help a lot. And just understanding what people should be getting out of this video that you're making. And then you'll also wanna start considering what kind of video you are going to be making because traditionally most people think about the live action video. And the live action video is where you get your standard camera and you go out with your camera guy and you start taking footage of a tutorial or footage of a scene and start stitching this, the scenes together into a larger scale video. But that's only one small kind of video that is usually braided together and combined with other types. The kind that I usually do is screen recorded tutorials. So screen recorded tutorials are great if you're using a software based tool. And if you want to be showing people how to use um, technology tools, software, if you want to demonstrate something on a computer, since everything is going digital nowadays, screen recording is an awesome, awesome thing to do. And the animation and kinetic typography would be if you've ever seen Star Wars, that's the opening of Star Wars, where you have the text that's going up out into the galaxy. Oh, yes. And if you've ever seen, oh. <laughs> and if you've seen those music videos where you don't have any images, you just have text. And the text just pops up in different shapes and sizes and colors, and it can tell a story all on its own. That would be kinetic typography. And I actually have guides with different tools and options to help you make each one of these different kinds. And we'll get to that a little bit later after we run through the important bits of this planning guide. So the other important part of planning is choosing your tools. So if you've ever gone to a consultant and asked, which tool should I use? Which video editor should I use? Which audio editor should I use? They're going to ask you, what do you want to do? And then if you've never heard of video editing before, you're probably going to stare at them blankly and just, and just say, I want to make videos. And that's not going to help the consultant and it's not going to help you. So that's where we're going to go back to this video production guide. And in these video editing and audio editing sections, I'm going to help you kind of shake off the newness of what all this means. So you're going to start learning different key terms and different key tasks that you can do in video and audio editing. So when you're trying to choose your tool and when you're talking to the person trying to sell you stuff, 
you'll know that this is actually what I want to, you can communicate to them and say, this is what I want to accomplish. This is what I absolutely need my video editor to do. I don't need it to do this, so I'm not going to pay extra for that. And I'm going to choose this tool. So that is the purpose of this section of the guide, so that it will help you plan out the tools that you need. And the pieces in between here will help you so that you don't waste time, energy, and money in putting together a video that you could have done in half the time. So after you've filled out that planning guide, you've chosen what kind of video you're going to make, and you start laying out the different shots and the different scenes that you want to be in your video that will actually reach the target audience that you want to reach. And you'll decide if you want to use a word for word scripting or if you want to do an outline script or if you're feeling really confident and want to skip an outline altogether. And then once you've had all that major planning together, you'll start either recording or finding your video so that you can put all the pieces together and make it look the way that you want. And editing is actually the last thing that you do. So once you've had all of this together, this is just one final piece of it. And a lot of libraries actually just ask a volunteer to do it for them. So it really depends on how you want to use this and what you're planning to do with it. And if I could ask in the chat, could you say in there what you actually plan to do and what you want to get out of this? Yeah, so yeah, go ahead and type into the question section, everybody, and just say, you know, why are you here? What are you looking for? Yeah. Um, I know the, as you were going through this, I've done, have had to vid edit, edit videos before, um, like our show videos for this sometimes. And when you're talking the video editing part about uh, choosing your tool and knowing what they do, that would have been very helpful to me sometimes. I know I've kind of flailed around <clears throat> using the wrong tool, trying to figure it out, and then discover, oh, wait, this other thing actually did exactly what I wanted in like five minutes. Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Some planning or looking ahead would have been very uh, helpful. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. We've got, uh, we are trying to create craft tutorials. Um, but sometimes they seem really long. Mm, I can see that. Yeah, it takes long to yeah. talk about how to make a thing. <clears throat> so I want to up my game, readers, advisory, interviews, animations, and interactive components potentially updating tutorials on the basics of using the library catalog, et cetera. Yep. Just here to get an overview. I have very little experience. Uh, possibly tutorials, some fundraising requests, uh, make story times with my bunnies. Ooh, bunnies. Uh, <laughs> reading books about bunnies. I need to make an intro first. Uh, someone is concerned they will lose their audience, about losing their audience. I see so you got that marketing section there. Um, to make better videos for the online course I teach, um, how-to videos for library databases, youth programming, story time. Um, what else we got here? Make captivating story videos and get more people to watch and enjoy them and maybe start tutorials for our patrons. Instructional videos, cooking tutorials, crafts, or others. Yep. Learn how to make a better quality virtual programs, virtual story times, uh, looking for free tools for libraries. That's something too I was wondering about. Like, is there tools that don't cost? I'm sure there is. There's a ton of them. Yeah. Um, need some ideas for streamlining uh, the making and editing of story time videos, uh, programming tutorials, story time, story time. Let's see. Cooking and library videos. Sorry, I'm jumping around a little bit here because there's a lot of things here. Tech tutorials about who using Hoopla or Libby. Um, ooh, wants to know more about editing our book chats to look less rookie-ish. Yeah. Um, um, ooh, want to learn how to use a GoPro to create library programming. Yeah. Oh, the shakiness is a thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah video quality yep oh and recommendations on the best equipment to use like what cameras and whatnot yep okay so what will help the vast majority probably everyone on here I'm going to click into step two the video styles so this planning your video it's basically just take 15 minutes Pour, dump out everything your in your head onto a piece of paper and just start getting your thoughts in order. 
and video styles for those who don't already know which types of videos are available to be made these will help so each one of these it has a related section so this live action video is the most common type and the people who are doing cooking shows some of the craft tutorials and the youth programming will probably want to use this live action video because you're going to be taking a camera in front of real subjects and so this will lay out the basic steps that are included in making the actual live action video and then if we scroll down a little bit i've pulled some relevant tutorials that are based on the type of equipment you're going to be using to shoot the video the two most common ones are the smartphone because you already have it and if you don't have one yourself you can probably find someone who does and who will let you use it and the camera on the smartphone is already usually really good and can do what you want to do and then the next step up is the dslr camera and the dslr camera is go is great for video making it's great for pretty much everything you want to do and this will tell you the different settings that you're supposed to use <clears throat> and because dsl cameras you get so many different models of them you can find a video that will show you a specific settings for a specific tool but it helps to understand why those settings are in existence and why you're doing the things you're doing. And that's what these videos will help you do. And then this DSLR camera, how I make YouTube videos that will give you different tips and tricks for how to angle and orient your camera to do what you want to do. So if you were trying to do a, if you're trying to shoot a story time hour, It'll show you how to angle the camera downward and how to do the lighting so that you don't get a glare off of your pages. Because most children's books use those glossy pages that you really want to highlight the illustration. And you'll be able to know how to kind of fix up all the lighting and stuff to get the best out of your game. And the webcam is one that I included because it's getting a lot more popular. Um, you can do an entire story time hour show just with a really good webcam. Just make sure that you get a 1080p because you'll be able to put it up on YouTube. And then that will make sure that whoever is viewing the, the video, no matter what size screen or quality of screen they're looking at, whether it's a TV or a computer, they'll have a really good quality image to see and they won't be able to say, oh, this is just a library video, it's super grainy. So that's what it sounds like a lot of people are trying to get away from, and these resources will help you avoid that. And for the people who are looking for specific tools and different um, tutorials to look for, Canva and the Windows Video Editor are the free options that are really great for beginners. If you are looking for cost-effective options that range between free and paid that have varying different experience levels, I pointed you toward Tom's guide. So Tom's guide, he'll give you the different tools that are available and why you would want to use those tools. And these are in existence as of 2020, but as we all know, software and hardware go in and out of existence on, at the turn of a hat. So <laughs> it's a thing. And if you happen to have a little bit of money, you can go into the Adobe Creative Cloud. And if, you are, if you're attached with a school or associated with a school, you might already have this and you will qualify for a lower cost for getting the Adobe Suite. That is a collection of um, 20 plus different tools that, we can, that can be used for image editing, editing, video editing, and a variety of other things. So Adobe Spark, is $9.99 a month and it is it's a really simple editing tool if you want all the bells and whistles that's not the way to go but if you just want to be able to stitch together some different scenes that you've already shot then it's a good way to go but i'm going to click over into I have a question about a software, um, and I'm not sure if you're going to get to it yet, but it might be a good time to ask since it did just yeah. pop here, and it's something that I have heard of myself. Um, what about Screencast-O-Matic? Have you, you got that? It, you have that in there somewhere? So <laughs> let me go down to Screen. Or is that, 
Oh, if that's something you're gonna get to, that's okay. So the screen recording, I have the same tutorials that are available on here. If you want the Cadillac of pre-screen recordings that has a higher learning curve but can do everything you wanna do, OBS Studio is a good one. Um, if you just want something that is quick and easy to use, Flashback Express has a free option. Um, Flashback Express is the one that I use. And they have like a, it's made by Blueberry Software. They also have a pro version that will do a little bit more with all the, and has added in editing capabilities. So if you have, if you need basic editing and you need to do screen recording, getting the pro version of Flashback Express works. Um, I kind of got around that by using the free Flashback Express recorder and using alternative editing software just to keep it all free. <clears throat> so that's something too that I think is the key that sometimes you might be using more than one product to do everything. It's not necessarily, I mean, some of them may have the extra bells and whistles you're mentioning or the editing feature or some um, advanced features for a fee, but there might be some other product that will do similar or at least close enough to what you want to do for free. And it's going to take some digging around and knowing what each product offers. Yeah. Pretty much. And a lot of times these free tools will shift what's included in their free product. I so you check might on you suddenly, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so if you want one of the screen recorders that you can either highlight text or draw things on the screen, like you might have seen in Khan Academy, um, this I might not be pronouncing this right, but a PowerSoft or a PowerSoft will do that. It just takes a little bit of a learning curve because it's all web based. You just go to the website, it'll ask you to download a plugin, and then you'll be able to record your screen and draw things on it, add text onto it, and different things like that. Mm -hmm. I would just practice with that one a little bit before you actually record something because there's a bit of a learning curve to it. And if you already, if you are using something like Flashback Express, you can also add in those drawn arrows after the fact. And sometimes adding in those arrows and those different images and features after doing the screen recording is actually easier. Because while you, if you try to add it in while you're doing the screen recording itself, you can get kind of thrown off a little bit because you're trying to do too many things at once. You're trying to remember what you wrote in your storyboard or your outline. You're trying to navigate the screen and make sure that you're displaying the right thing. And then you're also trying to get a perfectly drawn arrow or a perfectly drawn text using a mouse, which can be a bit difficult to do. Hmm. So if you use something like um, After Effects, which is another Adobe product that's included in the Creative Suite, or if you use this free tool from Canva, you'll be able to add all those arrows and images afterward when you don't have to think about it so hard. <laughs> All right, do we have any other questions about specific tools or options? No, we have a question more about um, recording your video, but um, let me see here. Any scripting and story video? <clears throat> well, we might get into that in a later part, so I'll just wait until. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. All right. So it sounds like people kind of want to know what their options are right away. So I'll just <laughs> run through these really quickly. And I'm going to go back up to the video styles and we'll run down to, I know someone had a question about the, they wanted to do the kinetic, kinetic typography and the animation options. And luckily the tools that do that, they usually do both. So I'm going to go to animation or kinetic typography. So if you want to, so in a lot of those introductory slides or introductory, introductory openings to videos, there's usually a little bit of animated text that moves across the screen, or you have those animated shapes that kind of create motion and imagery on the screen. And you can also, I don't wanna get overly detailed right now because this is more of an overview, but if you're using an SVG, a scalable vector graphic, 
you can digitally break those little pieces apart and that is what gets animated. So if you have access to, and there's a bunch of free SVGs that are available. And when you use these tools, it will show you how, what that looks like and why you might want to do it. So I put in these YouTube videos so that you can click them open and you'll be able to see examples of what this actually looks like. And if you want to try to recreate this in your videos. And then down here, Adobe After Effects is the most user-friendly, easy to use version of it. But whenever something is user-friendly and easy to use, it usually has a price tag attached to it. And indeed, Adobe After Effects does. Um, it's included in the Creative Suite, but I believe you can also get it independently. Um, Biteable and so Biteable is a, it's an app that's online and it's actually specifically designed for animation and it can do the kinetic typography where you can pipe, like pop up different words that are, that pop up on the screen in accordance with something that you're speaking on here. And Powtoon is another one that I realized that I haven't put on here yet, but Biteable and Powtoon, they both do that. And Filmora is another really low cost editor that I've used a bunch of times. And they have a free version, but it may have shifted over to a free trial by now. I'd actually have to double check that. And, but they will do all the kinetic typography. They'll do basic to intermediate level animation and they will most likely do everything that you would need to do for an introductory slide or an introductory opening or just those little basic animations that pop up along the way. And I've also included a list of alternative options just in case this isn't doing it for you. So with the kinetic typography and animation, audio is key. Audio is really important. Um, Audacity is a free resource that you can use. Um, it has a lot of different tutorials that are available. And I've included a whole bunch of those Audacity tutorials down in the audio editing section in the common audio editing tasks, which we will get to after going through these options. And Canva is what I recommend for beginners. So Canva is what I have open here. And I'll click open this screen here. This is a video that I made using all open source video clips. I didn't shoot a single thing and I just added text on here. And this was all made in Canva. So you can see on here sort of how this works. You have your timeline down here. And when you click open and then click on this, this entire thing is actually a video. And you can see this little place button down here. Up here, it's showing you how many seconds long that video clip is. If you click on this, it'll start to play it and you can actually trim it down. So if you want like a little 0.8 seconds of an egg, you can do that. Slick. Hmm. Um, well, since you were talking about the audio before with um, Audacity and whatnot, someone did actually have a question that's related to that. Yeah. Um, about sound quality, and I think people were asking about this as well too, about audio quality. Um, do you, what about um, uh, equipment for that? Using a separate microphone, um, speaker. You know, yeah. what do you have for that? I know here I can tell you, I we do have microphones we use for some of our things right now. I use the microphone built into the webcam that's sitting on top of my monitor. Um, so this. I will also include a link to the podcasting guide. Ah, yes. So the that would have podcast of the equipment guide, that would be related to that in that one. Yep. So this one has the recording and editing. It'll have the. It, this will go deeper in depth into specific audio tools and specific things that you would need to do for audio and sound quality, so that when you 
save the when you save this and export it you'll be able to use it with a video and you also won't blow up people's eardrums if they're trying to listen to it through um, headphones or if they're trying to listen to it in like a quieter area mm -hmm. and they also won't have to like turn up the volume just to be able to hear you and so part of um actually last month's um pretty sweet tech that amanda did was about doing podcasts yeah uh, and podcasters, podcasters start all, your own so if you look in our archives um we've got that whole the recording of that show of hers um with the guide as well there yeah and once you know how to do editing for podcasting you pretty much know how to do audio editing and you'll just be able so the major difference is that you'll be lining up the sounds differently and the software that you use is a little bit different so you can make your audio soundtrack in audacity reaper or adobe, adobe audition and then you'll use something like adobe after effects to be able to line those sounds up so that you can have like a little clang sound that lines up perfectly with your with your video clip and that is something that adobe after effects can do but something like canva wouldn't be able to do because if you click on this happy whistling ukulele, this is the background music that's going along with this video. But you can change where you are playing the song, but it won't let you do very much more than that. That's kind of a happy song. <laughs> So if you want to be able to play a really specific little sound bite of this with this clip, you'll either need to use something like Adobe After Effects or you'll need to be able to really specifically set up that clip and then attach it directly to this little clip, it would in directly to this clip, which is actually done using a different method. So you see this present and record up here in this upper right hand corner. So this only works in Chrome. Um, I happen to be in Mozilla Firefox right now. So when I click on this, it's not gonna work. It's going to ask me to download Chrome. But if I put this into Chrome, uh, Google Chrome. It will actually let me start doing a basic presentation and start recording my audio narration with this sound. <clears throat> so you can get a little bit more specific with it, but it's still not going to let you do the exact lineup that you would need to be able to do to do a higher quality animation or kinetic typography. So Canva is great for stitching together and trimming audio clips but if you want precision it's probably not the way to go but this is what the recording studio looks like and it couldn't canva couldn't access it because i'm using it in a different application so rather than shutting my audio down here you can just play around with that on your own using canva and google chrome there's also youtube tutorials that'll show you how to do it All right, so now I'm going to go back into, does anyone want me to do a quick demonstration of how I made one of these slides in Canva? And you can just give a yes or a no in the chat. Yes, yes, sure, yes, of course they do, yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm going to go, down. I'm going to hit this plus sign at the end here. <clears throat> And I'm going to say that I want to add just one more little scene on here. So Canva has pre-made video clips. Some of them are available for free and others will have a little crown symbol in the bottom right hand corner, meaning that they are with the pro version only. So I'm going to grab one of these free clips and something that fits with my theme here, this. And so we'll drag this up to the corner, resize it, and you can also do an oversize and drag this to feature 
what you want to feature in there. So if you drag this to be larger than the size of the designated canvas, whatever is outside of that canvas is not going to appear in your final product. And you want to position this so that you have an area to add in any additional text. So you can go into text, go to add a heading, click up here, and you can change your font. I believe that I used Allegra in the previous ones, but I'd have to double check that. And then you have to click off of it and then click back in. We'll shrink this down, change the font to the font size to about 40. So we want this to be legible. We'll go 88. Move this where you want. And this is basically just like shifting stuff around in any graphics editor. I'm just clicking it and moving it. And these also have built-in guidelines. So if you have other, if you have other things uh, available on your screen, you can line up elements. So I'm going to go into my stickers. So the elements would be some various different little stickers, icons, or anything that you happen to pull in. And if you want to line this up with the top of the text box or center it up, you'll be able to do that on the other side. And you can also center it down along the right. And you can see that little purple line that showed up right here. And if you have your own videos, you can also upload them in. So all of these videos actually came from Pixabay. So Pixabay has free open source videos that you can use in your own projects. Um, the cool thing about Canva is that it's actually automatically integrated with Pixabay and Pexels. So when you go down into more and click into Pixabay, it will let you search in for free images. However, that's an integration for the images section of Pixabay, but the video section of Pixabay, since it's a little bit on the newer end, doesn't always show up in here. Huh. So what I did was I went into Pixabay, went to videos, found, and this is actually where I got all of my typing shots. This is where this one came from. This nice. is the opening slide, if you remember it. And let's grab this one. We'll go into free download, download it. I'm going to save the file. I'll go back into Canva. Then I'm going to open a new slide. We'll go into uploads, upload the video. I'm going to choose my device as the location that I'm looking for. It automatically goes to my download folder. I chose apparently that file clip was called workspace. So we'll open it. And so this little waving line here shows that this video is still uploading, but it is usable in here while it's uploading. So I'm going to click it, click it over. I'll resize it. Now I don't want a full 33.1 seconds on this video. So I'm going to click this and crop it. And I'm going to watch this to find out where I actually want this crop to land. So as you're going to learn later in the editing section, so sometimes there's going to be a something called a J cut and an L cut. So a J cut is, and those kind of scenes means that you're following the action into the next scene. So if you watch this, you'll see his arm is moving. So I'm going to wait until his arm is moving and he's indicating in this direction. So we can grab that little clip of the snip, 
So right here is where we want it. There, it's that action right there. And so we want it to go to about here. So when you're planning your videos, this is what you're looking for. Because you're going to be planning this to say, I'm going to be indicating people's attention to be going to this side of the screen. And I'm going to use this to set up the next bit so that the action is either happening over here and people are going to already be looking over here or you're going to be mirroring this action and may, there might be a woman who's doing this exact same thing mm -hmm. and they're going to be mimicking that action and you can turn that into a montage, you can turn it into an introduction or you can just make your video smooth, like smooth and flow together like that. And that's what you start to learn when you start playing around with what's available in video editing. Oh, we do have a question about Canva. Uh, can it can 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 you use Canva with iMovie? Do you know if it would? In what way? Yeah, I guess. So would you do the some of the editing in iMovie and then finish it up in Canva? To edit and add details. I guess. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So what I've done before is um, so I'm a PC user, so I've used um, either OpenShot or Windows Movie Maker, mm -hmm. and it's actually called, it's now called Windows Video Editor. If you have Windows, it's automatically available in your, on your computer, but if you just search for Video Editor, it shows up. Yeah. So I've done some of the editing on there, and then uploaded the clip into Canva so and then to, I said that upload media I can see in the upper left there so you could upload something that you originally got had in iMovie yeah yeah so if you had it if you have it saved anywhere on your device flash drive you can upload it and then finish it off in Canva yep and I should show you what this will look like and bear in mind that this is all free open source clips So I actually cat, of course. <laughs> yeah. I actually use that in a so I do a teaching technology in the library course, and I use that in a section that people were asking, how can I use technology to solve real problems in my community? Mm -hmm. And you can see that little montage was all the different ways that you can use technology to just help you do everyday things. So cooking dinner, you don't necessarily need an app for that, but you can find a recipe online and order ingredients. And Learned I could too. I've done that, looked up like, how do I 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> never done before. And you can see there's also continuity throughout this whole thing. So as I was searching for these open source clips, I found the same or similar hands. So mm -hmm. a lot of times when people upload these clips, they are using the same model to do different tasks. And a lot of times it's themed. So I was able to find these same hands doing different things. And you can show you can see them showing up later. Something you would not I would not have thought about. And there's when I couldn't find the same hands, I found male hands. Similar. So and similar ones, yeah. They show up later. There's one more clip in here where those same sleeves show up. So that's kind of the continuity that you're looking for. And a lot of times, if you don't have the same exact hand, when you've had other things that go in between, people don't notice. Like I would, if I hadn't made this, I would never notice that it was a slightly different male hand. I didn't even, yeah. didn't, I didn't even pay attention. I was reading the words and mainly looking at the technology, honestly. <laughs> See, and that might be also, subconscious, you know, people, it makes the connection better or something. Yeah, I don't know. But if it had been a female hand, you might have noticed. Yeah. And when you start doing that content, and this is where that storyline comes in and where the storyboarding mm -hmm. comes in, because mm -hmm. I made like a general, a fake character from my fake movie. And then I said, well, it's just going to be a guy doing all this stuff. I'm going to run through and have them do all these different tasks and I wrote through a storyboard. So my storyboard, here's an example of a storyboard. So this is what a completed storyboard would look like for the Simply Safe Social Distancing sweater video. I found out that the easiest way to show how storyboarding works is not by asking someone to just write a storyboard because people go insane. <laughs> Instead, it's easier to start with an example of a really short video and then ask, what are the different things that people are doing during this video? What are the different items that are showing up in the shots? How is the camera angle during this video? And how would you recreate this shot by shot in a storyboard? So I'll show you. Hearing it. Yeah. <laughs> so this is the Simply Safe Social distance, Distancing Sweater. The holidays are here. Unfortunately, so is the pandemic, which got us thinking. If Simply Safe Home Security can protect your home, could simply say protect your holiday. Remind your family you're happy to see them, but happier six feet apart. The Simply Safe Social Distancing Sweater. Happy holidays to all. And to all, a simply safe night. And I chose that video as an example because it would be really easy to do it yourself. Because what was it really? It was a set of figurines that someone took a photo of. And when you're shooting it, you focus on the house, but you blur the workshop in the background to keep focus. You add wrapping paper in the corner of the frame to show that it's around the holidays. And this is the section of materials and editing tools that you'd be able to use to make that scene. These are the collection of props that you would use. These are the tools that you could use to edit it. Um, you would use your own editing tool in place of this just to let the team, like any team members that you are working with know what you're using, what's coming up next and how they should be using this tool. And if you have any relevant script or any text that you want add during, added during edit, this is what you would add on here. Because when you're adding text in edit, you have to plan for that. 
you have to say, okay, I'm going to be shooting this shot in here, but I need to frame it so that I have an open space on the right-hand side that I can add my text in this section. And I wanna be able to set the scene so that I have a blink smooth background that is a solid color or something that won't heavily contrast with the text color that I wanna use. And that will help, that will just work wonders when you're trying to do your final edit. Otherwise, you're going to have to be doing a, taking a whole lot extra time just to fix the shot. And just going through this line by line, shot by shot, and saying, I want a close up of the workshop wall with a mask hanging because I want to demonstrate that it's during the pandemic. And when I frame this shot, I'm going to center it and I'm going to add in an area for text. And then you say what you're going to put in it, the tools you're going to use, and the text that you want added. Because when you're actually doing this in practice, it might be all all of this might be you who's doing it, or you might be delegating it out to different people. You mm -hmm. might be asking someone, one person to be behind the camera. You might be asking a volunteer to come in to do the edit. You might be asking just a variety of people. And you're going to have to start practicing with making this document, but also understanding who's looking at this document and saying, okay, well, I'm going to be this one person's going to be doing the shot, but they're never even going to touch the editing part of it. So people need to be able to see the whole thing, but understand what their role is in it. So this just takes a little bit of practice. Mm -hmm. So what I put together for practice is a lesson plan. So this is a lesson plan that'll show you how to run through a simple exercise with either library staff members or if you happen to be teaching this in a library for any purpose. This will show you how to set up the social distancing sweater video or insert video of choice if you don't like social distancing sweaters. <laughs> and it'll show you how to run through a discussion and ask the right questions to start backtracking and figuring out how to make these videos that you see. So when you see a video and you say, I really like the kinetic typography in this video, I really like the way that they're targeting my young adult audience, what is it that's working in this video and how can I recreate it? You start picking that video apart, pulling out the elements that you like, and then figuring out how you can recreate it in your own work and with your own subject matter. Mm -hmm. So if you run through these different questions, asking about what's included in here, what did they use as a script, what was spoken, what was added on the screen, um, what was at, what was pre-thought out during shooting and what was added in the edit, and how can I do this myself? Nice. All right, we do have a bunch of questions that have come in. Um, yeah. that maybe we can get to. Um, and I'll just let everyone know um, we are getting to the top of the hour again. We did start a little after 10 a.m., so that's fine. Uh, we'll go as um, officially our show goes for 10 to 11 a.m. but uh, Central Time. But we will uh, stay and go on as long as everyone has questions that they want to ask of, of Amanda. We won't get cut off right at 11 o'clock or anything. So if you do have any questions or anything you want to know more about, uh, type into the question section and we can answer some of those questions. There's a lot of resources and, and information in the video, the guide that she's put together. So um, you'll probably find lots more answers and things in there too. But I'll definitely grab all the questions you have right now so we can get them answered while we're here this morning too. Is that cool, Amanda? Yeah. Um, you want to start with the questions? Yeah, yeah, let's get some of those done so we can, uh, let's see. Um, what do we have here? Oh, I think you might have mentioned this in the beginning, so I'll jump into it right now. Uh, ideal, what is the ideal video length for social media? You oh, so. I know, research. <laughs> for social media specifically, it depends on what you're trying to do. If it's an ad that is going to show up on social media, usually about 30 seconds or less. If it's a video that people are going to be watching on social media, uh, one to 10 minutes. Um, if it is, I guess, what specifically would it be? Depends on what you're trying to get out. Yeah. 
but no longer than 10 minutes really like sometimes people like yeah. i think we said at the beginning people lose interest depending on what it is you know story times and things that most libraries are doing yeah and this guideline generally applies to social media too because mm -hmm. and so social media they started even when you have your phone or your computer on silent it will sometimes start automatically playing the video with captions mm -hmm. And there is a time when people will watch maybe three minutes of a video on silent with captions, then decide to watch it. So, then, oh, I actually want to see or hear more about this one. Let's start over again. And yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So one to 10 minutes is general for most settings. Okay. And speaking about closed captioning, that was another question that was asked. So it's just cool that you mentioned that. Um, yeah. Do you have any information about the best auto captioning that might be out there that people could use? Well, how would that? Auto captioning, quality auto captioning using like machine learning to do the caption mm -hmm. costs money. I haven't actually found a free one to do. Mm -hmm. I did find a free labor intensive way to do it though. Mm. I know YouTube does it for ours. Um, yeah. It's because I use that for our Encompass Live. That's what I rely on for them um, since we use YouTube for our hosting of our uh, archives. It's good ish um it needs tweaking every time I've, I've kind of not been able to keep up with that i mean it's in there and the basics are there it doesn't know certain things like it doesn't know the name of our show and compass live that confuses the heck out of it uh, <laughs> um but it, it does you know if you do use youtube i know that has it there yeah um you might want to look at srt captions generator so fun fact, I used to be a captionist right out of college. <laughs> nice. Okay. Yeah. So just typing so, the things into. Oh, well, I was a, I was like a real time captionist. Oh, wow. Okay. I used yeah. the like speech to text and I captioned phone calls, but mm -hmm. I also moonlighted as doing um SRT captioning. So the so if you search for the subtitle generator most of the good ones are paid mm. but there are some free ones that are out there that i'm not gonna lie there's not a lot of great ones i have tested it's a hard most. thing to do automatic yeah and and as you said youtube caption but there are some things like niche academy and some um learning management systems like that don't like to use YouTube. They will ask you to automatically upload your own video file and it's hosted on their platform. Mm. And it won't work as well if you try to embed a YouTube video into it. So there are some services that don't let you do that. Like Niche Academy actually recommends that you use an SRT captioning file. So there are some times when the automatic, the automated YouTube captions aren't an option. Hmm. So, so you're gonna have to find something else, yeah. And and that's the same thing with Facebook. Facebook's captioning kind of means that you're putting it up on Facebook live stream or Facebook, like loading it into Facebook. And you might need something alternative to do it. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, the best free way that I found to do it was using the video editor or Camtasia to add in captions. Mm. It and takes a long time to do it though. It does. Um, it takes a long time to edit the ones that are automatically done too. And someone did ask, do you go in and edit on in YouTube captions? Yes, I, I go I yeah, I try to go in and edit them and when if I have the time, I don't always have the time to get in to do them every time. But you can go into YouTube editing and do it, yeah um that's the srt caption file there's a specific format for it so if you do have something that you need to add captions for and you don't want to do it manually there are some platforms that will let you load in a separate srt file and there's just tutorials for how to do it um this how to create custom srt files is what i've used before you can see it because i've clicked it before 
Yeah, yeah. And some just it's just say um, a recommendation. You can download the SRTs from your YouTube videos. Yeah, I, I've seen that too. And then embed them with um, MK, MKV Toolnix or something else. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you look it up, you can find information about that. Yeah. And just thank you for the SRT info. That was very helpful. Yeah. Um, something else about sound quality, audio quality. We've got a few questions about that actually. Um, Let's see, what about sound quality when you are not close to your camera or iPad, like when you're recording story time? Um, and I think someone else has a similar question about what about tips for improving audio in live action recording if I'm recording someone else doing a task and take the audience through it. So I've seen lots of story time videos where it's obvious that the person is back from a camera or someone holding the iPad or whatever. And I guess sound quality has been an issue in those kind of situations. You can use um, multiple microphones and you can use the little clip on microphones. So if you are shooting something that has the conversation, they actually make little clip ons that are almost invisible underneath a shirt. You might be able to just see the edge of a little dot poking out. Mm -hmm. You have the present the person reading on this one. You have anyone asking questions or anyone behind the counter re behind the camera reading wearing another one and you can merge those two lines together. The two different um, audio sections. Yeah, so that you'd have two microphones, two sound, two audio uh, files that you would then put into the final video, yep. And if you do something like that, make sure you clap or something because when you clap, that clap will spike the audio and you'll know when to line up. So, oh. So when you go into Audacity, Reaper, or any audio editing software, you'll see the waveform, like the audio waveforms. And that clap is just the easiest way I've found to line everything up. So and then you'll also line up a little note that that's where it is. That's where instead of trying to just have to listen and listen and listen until you get to it. I've, and then yeah. you're, if you're lining up with a video, when you see the clap, you know where you are. Mm -hmm. Nice. Then you just clip it off. Yeah, then you know you do that ahead of time and then pause a bit before you go into what you actually want the audio to be. So you do kind of kind of have to, this is like goes along with storyboarding, you have to think about this ahead of time that we're going to have two microphones, we're going to have two recording things going on. <clears throat> we're going to have to pay attention to what we'll need to do with it afterwards. Yeah. And you can practice clapping in unison. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. All right. Um, we're a little after 11 o'clock. That's okay. As I said, we'll stick around for as long as you guys have questions. So if you have anything else you want to ask, get it into the question section. Uh, we have one from um, earlier that I had held on to a bit here. Um, and this is more about acting, but how do I read my notes while filming and not look like I'm looking at notes? <laughs> I want it to look like I'm looking at the camera. Ah. The prompter. Is, so is there stuff that there's like is there things that you can get that are those yeah so yeah. what i've used before is i've set up a teleprompter on my computer and i put the teleprompter directly underneath the camera and so then it looked like you can put it right above right below but when you start putting it side to side it starts looking like you're looking off into the distance right <laughs> But if you start setting up your props so that your props are mirroring your indicated eye movement, so all of your props are down and you're looking slightly down, it just looks normal. Mm -hmm. So it really depends on how you set up your, how you set your scene too. And if you start flowing all of your design downward to match your eye movement, it just looks like you're supposed to be looking there. That makes sense, yeah. So instead of, you know, having your piece of paper here that you're reading off of, there's gonna be something on your screen right there. I've done yeah. that before, yeah. I've done it with just um, faking, I guess. Like, like, like here, I'm sitting at my desk, so I'm doing things, and I'll have like a Word doc or something up, and it's right there. So if I'm reading off of it, it looks like I'm looking at them, but I happen to be reading what's right below. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a little tricky, yeah. <laughs> um, but I never thought about that. There'd be free teleprompter type things that exist out there, that's awesome. <laughs> And you just copy and paste your whole script in here, and then you can set the size of the screen. And there is a, there are a lot of them where you can set the speed of it too. Um, if you're getting really into it, you can also use a foot pedal. 
So a foot pedal is something that is just, it's hidden and visible underneath a desk. And when you press it down, it'll pause your teleprompter. When you release it, it'll keep it going again. Mm. And so if you are getting really into it, then, or if you, you can use the foot pedal or just have someone standing out of view on the camera that just pause it, go, pause it, go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Slick. Okay. Uh, another question just popped in here. Uh, do you have any specific ideas or suggestions? Oh, for help with filming and editing using a green screen. Yes. Yeah, about that in your guide there. Yeah. Green screen. There we go. Awesome. <laughs> so the green screen, uh, the software that you'll most likely use, there are apps that are specifically designed for it. So for those that don't know, um, green screen is pretty popular. Um, but what you do is you set up the green screen behind you, make sure the lighting is really even because unless you have like, so during the editing process, you're going to be going into a video or image editing software. You're going to use that software to select the green color that is showing up as the background you'll pull that out and then you replace it with the background of your choice. And then you'll want to adjust the contrast and adjust the setting of the, your, your footage so that it matches the contrast and color setting of your background. Otherwise you're going to just look unnatural. So what the Stop Motion Studio app and what the Filmora app recommended app, like the recommended apps do is instead of asking you to change out the, to pull out that color frame by frame, it will automatically do it and automatically color match it. And you'll be able to adjust the threshold of color that you're pulling from the background so that you don't start making people like lose the edges of their arm or lose the, like the pixels yeah. on the edge. And so it just makes it a lot easier. And the Adobe Creative Cloud, the Creative Suite, they have things like, um, the Pro and they have After Effects that will do it automatically. And so Canva's free video editor I put in here because not because it supports chroma key, but because once you've completed pulling out the chroma key, you can put it into Canva to finish off the editing. So I should probably indicate that because Canva does not support chroma key. <clears throat> but stop motion does and these recommended and the creative cloud they do. And the same audio editing software works for that same thing. Mm -hmm. And one other thing that'll be really helpful is this tutorial from Filmora Video Editor. It'll show you how to set up the green screen, how to shoot using a green screen, and pretty much everything you need to do to add the common effects that's used during that. Nice. And that's just included in the resources to learn green screen. Yeah. Cool. All right. Um... There's no other questions right now. If anybody has any questions you want to ask, get into the question section. Um, Amanda, is there anything else you wanted to share as part of your presentation? Anything to finish up or you wanted to make sure you got out there or wrap up? Uh, so the last couple of things that I'll touch on is how you can shake off the newness of learning the terminology for video editing and audio editing. Mm -hmm. um, I added in the common video editing options so you can start watching through these tutorials and you'll start learning about all those different common cuts and transitions that are used in video so when people start asking you which video editor you want to use what will work for you what do you need it to do what don't you need it to do you mm -hmm. can look at these and say i need to be able to do a jump cut and i need to be able to do an l cut so that i can bleed the audio over from one screen to the next nice. and be able to do what I need to do. And it would be nice for people to just even learn what can I do with video? Because some of these things I wouldn't even know that it was a possibility to do, that these are a thing. Yeah. 
And I just did the same thing with the video editing. So uh, with the audio editing. So these are the basic tasks that you can do in audio editing. So when you're choosing your tool, you can kind of use this as a baseline to say, I need to be able to do this. I don't care about this, but I really want to do this. Mm -hmm. Nice. And there's also just recommended tools throughout here. Yep. And people ask about marketing, how to get it, um, you know, get people to watch. There's a whole marketing section there too in the in the guide. Yeah. And probably what's most helpful for that is this section here. So these will link out to um, this public library association. They've been doing it forever and a day. Oh yeah. These, this one is also a good one because it'll also give you specific tutorials for how to make the videos for those platforms. And these examples are, they're just kind of awesome. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we have a comment. Someone does say, thank you. This is an amazing resource list. Now I want to go play. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> um, and then um, we have a question about, um, can we share a link to this video production guide for librarians um, with our libraries? Yeah, go for it. Yeah, yeah. The link will be, um, well, the link I shared it into the uh, ch questions in chat, but um, <clears throat> it'll also be available. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, when I send you out the archive link too, it's just out there publicly. This is a Google Doc that's out there for anyone to use. Yep. In case the link got lost somewhere in the chat, I just put it back in there. And I'll also put in the one to the podcasting guide in case people want to learn a whole lot more about audio editing and podcasting. Mm -hmm. And I think since it is related i'm i'll put a link to the podcast archive recording when i put the archive up for this particular show and and do we have any other questions Anybody have any other desperate questions you want to ask right now while we are still here? Oh, and I will also put in at the end of this guide. Oh, yeah. Contact Amanda for all any help you want. Anybody can. Yep. <laughs> so that it shows up <laughs> in here. There's a last minute thing. Great thing about Google Docs, it can be edited right away and there it is, awesome. <laughs> All right, um, it doesn't look like any other um, urgent questions are coming in right now, that's fine. Um, just some thanks, thanks for all the great info, wonderful. Thank you for sharing your knowledge, absolutely. <laughs> uh, and thanks for coming. I hope you yeah. have a great holiday weekend. Yes, hopefully have some people have some time off. All right, um, I'm gonna pull back presenter control to my screen here just to wrap things up. There it is. All right. So as I said, um, we have recorded this show. It'll be available on our uh, Encompass Live page in our archive section here, um, which is underneath our new shows it'll be at the top here everybody who attended today and registered today will get a link letting you know when the recording is available it'll have a link to the um video on our youtube channel and a link to and i have them open here because i've been clicking on them as she's been sending them to me the video guide the podcasting guide um the uh the previous show, just last month, last uh, end of the month, when uh, Amanda talked about the podcasting, so we have the, the podcast guide there as well, and also the recording of that show if you want to um, watch that. 
Um, we'll have links to all of that in there for you. Um, that should be done uh, by the end of the day tomorrow. As I mentioned at the beginning, if those of you who are here, we are here at the Nebraska Library Commission. We're, um, we are closed on Friday for New Year's Day. We're state agencies, we're closed on Friday, so I'll have that done for everybody by the end of the day tomorrow. So look for emails from me, and we also post out to our various social media. Uh, Encompass Live does have a Facebook page. If you'd like to use Facebook, you give us a like over there. If you have reminders about um, when our shows are coming up, information about our presenters and when the recordings of the previous shows are available. So if you do like to use Facebook, go ahead and give us a like over there. We also post into other social media using the NCOMP Live hashtag, hashtag, a little abbreviation for our show. So Twitter, Instagram, not sure where else our social people do, but um, you can keep on us there as well. So um, that will wrap it up for today's show. Um, hopefully you join us and we, we um, invite you to join us for our upcoming shows. We've got our um, January shows, our first show of 2021, Best No Children's Books of 2020 will be next week's show. So please do sign up for that one and any of our upcoming shows. We'll get February dates, um, topics up there soon as well. So keep an eye on that. Um, and I don't know what Amanda has get, uh, planned for next month, if she knows yet. Mm -hmm. I can join her again at the end of January, January 27th. Would anyone ever be interested in doing a specific show just on one of those, like green screen or screen recording? Oh, like more in-depth on a particular uh, product or service? Uh, yes, I would love that. Lots of exclamation points, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, screencasting, like uh, I think that's a big thing that people are doing of like showing us people, a lot of people mentioned at the beginning, how, you know, how to use the library catalog, how to use the online resources since so many more people are using them, those kind of screen capturing type things, definitely. Um, a lot of screen recording uh, rec uh, requests coming in. Yeah, screen recording, screencast. So the next month will be screen recording and screencasts. All right. And live streaming. Yeah. And uh, uh, green screening too. Yep, that could be another one. But yeah, so look at that. Um, we'll get a description in there uh, soon. But if you want to, you know that next January 27th, you're welcome to go and register for that right now. Um, that it will be about doing screen crafting and screen recording more in depth into that particular. And maybe a future one on green screen. Green screen. Yeah. <laughs> How to do tutorials. Yeah. <laughs> I've done quite a few. <laughs> yeah. And someone says, yippee, they're very glad you're going to be doing that. Awesome. Yeah. So come back and join her next month. Absolutely. Cool. All right. Thank you so much. All right. I think we'll wrap it up today. Well, the last thing I do want to mention to, um, as a reminder for people, I've been trying to remind them about this. Um, we also host here at the Nebraska Library Commission, in addition to our weekly Encompass Live, do an annual Big Talk from Small Libraries online conference. It's uh, specifically presentations from smaller libraries, uh, usually population served or FTE of 10,000 or less. If you are from a small library, you know some, the call for speakers is open um, through into January. The um, event will be on Friday, February 26th. It's always the last Friday in February. Um, but submit your proposals now. Share this out to anyone you know who is at a small library. And when you know that um, any groups that may have small libraries, small and rural libraries in there, and all types we're talking, public, academic, school, anything. Um, we're looking for presenters for that. It's coming up. Uh, the deadline's coming up in January. And that, thank you very much, everyone. Um, so the link to the archive, well, I'll get the link to the archive page and the podcasting show will be in there for you. So we'll see if that works. Um, all right. I think that we'll wrap it up right now since it is getting a little even later after 11. <laughs> thank you so much for being with us again, Amanda. Thank you everybody for joining us this morning. Uh, stay warm, stay safe, um, and have a happy new year. And we will see you next year <laughs> on our next Encompass Live. Mm -hmm. Happy new year. Bye-bye. Happy new year. <laughs>